Hey everyone, and welcome back to the OpenMSX channel. In this video, we're diving into the fascinating world of MSX retro computing with OpenMSX, the MSX emulator that aims for perfection. You've seen the introduction, you've downloaded and installed OpenMSX, you are more than ready, in other words, to explore some of what the emulator can do in more detail. There are eight menus to explore. Machine, Media, Connectors, Safe State, Tools, Settings, Debugger and Help. In this video, we'll have a look at the first two of those. We already touched upon the machine menu in the installation video. It's where you select which machine you would like to use, pause the emulation, reset the MSX computer or switch it on or off. If you want to know if you have all the necessary files to run your favorite machine, there's a test for that, of course. Note that it is possible to run several instances at the same time. Say you have an MSX2 Plus running, but you would also like to run the boosted MSX Turbo R. We'll use the filter and select the OpenMSX Team Boosted MSX Turbo R. Instead of double-clicking on it, which will launch the machine immediately, at the bottom of the Select MSX Machine window, we'll click on New Machine Instance. You will now see two instances running in OpenMSX. Switching between them is a matter of double-clicking on the one you want to be displayed. The second menu, Media, is one you will be using quite a lot as well, probably. Depending on the machine you have selected, you will be able to insert cartridges, use one or more disk drives, or a tape deck perhaps. Don't see the option for Laserdisc? That's because the machine you have selected does not support it. With the advent of the Turbo R, support for cassette tapes was dropped, so you can stop looking for that option too now. Depending on what you would like to do, you'll have to select a machine that's up to the task. Find this a useful feature? Then there's more good news for you. Pressing Ctrl and Page Up or Page Down will cycle between the instances too. Cartridge games or applications are typically saved with the ROM extension. Inserting a virtual, of course, cartridge is easy. MSXDev.org has several games that you can download for free, so why not use them here? Once you have downloaded them, you can unzip and move them to a dedicated folder, and if you're in a hurry, you can just drag and drop one on top of the OpenMSX window. OpenMSX will ask you which cartridge slot you would like to select. Both are empty here, so it doesn't really matter. Clicking on Insert ROM next will do exactly that. Not in a hurry, you say? Excellent! Clicking on cartridge slot A in the media menu will open up a new window where you can navigate to the folder where you stored the MSX dev games. Same thing for cartridge slot B, obviously. Pick a ROM and you'll notice that the option ROM image has been selected, but at the top it still says no cartridge inserted. We'll come to that in a second. The option for resetting is checked by default, so your machine will automatically restart and launch the application. Normally, you'd switch off your computer before plugging in a cartridge, so the reset replaces the cold boot process. If you want to add an extension as a cartridge to one of your slots, that's possible too, of course, but here we'll carry on with our ROM. Click on Apply if you want to keep the cartridge window open, or on OK if you want to close it upon inserting the ROM. By the way, you can use zipped files, but OpenMSX doesn't like it when there's more than one file in the archive. 
Most games in the MSX Dev competition include a manual, so if any of the zip files you're trying out doesn't work, now you know why. Additionally, removing or ejecting the cartridge while your MSX is still on will most likely result in a crash, very much like a real machine would. The good news is that no hardware can be damaged here since it's all virtual anyway. Keep in mind as well that some cartridges, slot expanders notably, expect to be in the first slot available. It's the will of the gods. What can I say? So let it be written, so let it be done. Working with floppy disks is just as easy, so that's going to cut down explanation time considerably. Disk files typically have the file extension .dsk. Drag the zipped or unzipped disk file onto OpenMSX and it will be inserted automatically, just as with cartridges. If your MSX has more than one drive, you will be presented with the option to choose which drive you want to use. Typing files in BASIC will show you the contents of the disk. The rest is outside the scope of this tutorial, unfortunately. As with cartridges, you can also click on Media and then Disk Drive A, where you will find some other, very interesting options beside the option to add a disk file. Say that you have a collection of basic programs you typed in on your PC, or that you downloaded from somewhere. By using the option Directory as Disk, you can open all those files directly in OpenMSX. You can even use a RAM disk, a kind of temporary disk image stored in your computer's internal memory, but whose contents gets destroyed when you switch off the computer. It's a RAM disk after all, not a ROM disk. By now, you'll understand how the system works and inserting a CAS file, and yes, that's one of the extensions used for virtual cassettes, will no longer pose any major challenges. Browse for the file you want to use and OpenMSX will try to auto-run the contents of the tape, sometimes by running the contents for you, sometimes by beloading it. For the time being, cassette files in the TSX format are not supported. Loading from cassette is notoriously slow. The good news, in the next video I'll show you how you can speed up loading times nowadays. For those of you who don't believe that good things come to those who wait. If you don't like the screeching sound of the tape playing back, it's symphony of nails on a chalkboard mixed with the frantic chatter of robotic cicadas, you can select the mute tape audio option. Personally, I love it. Occasionally. You'll have noticed that we skipped the extension submenu. Depending on what you have installed, there is a lot of hardware you can add to your machine. It's impossible to go through every single extension, just know that this is where you can add an extra disk drive or a hard drive to your system, plug in more memory, boost the sound or video capabilities and so on. If you don't know what certain hardware is for, you'll find more information in the msx.org wiki, link in the description. Now, this video already took a lot longer than I had planned, so I'll cut it short here, but no worries, there's more to come. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more tutorials. Happy computing!